Thank you for tuning in again to our Through the Bible series here at Calvary St. Joseph. I'm Chuck, and we are excited to be in the book of Job today. Uh, one of my favorite books of all time. Um, I'm always marveled over, for example, chapters 3 through 37, how there's just a lot of dialogue. And if you're familiar with the book, you know that uh, Job isn't able to see behind the scenes like you and I. And he doesn't know um, that basically Satan and, and angels have a presence in chapter 1 and that uh, Satan and, and the Lord are talking. And basically the Lord says, have you considered my servant Job, that there's nobody upright like him in all the earth? And so there's a couple chapters there in the first two chapters where first the first um, day Job's loses everything near and dear to him except for his wife. All his children are killed and his servants are destroyed and I'm just a horrible, horrible day. But chapter one ends with uh, Job worshiping, you know, and um, he says, naked I came from my mother's womb and naked shall I return. Uh, blessed be the name of the Lord. And, and just an amazing reaction to what would be any parent's worst nightmare. But it continued on into chapter two where uh, God allowed Satan to afflict his body, but not to terminate his life. And from the uh, sole of his foot to the crown of his head, I mean, just painful boils. Can't even imagine that. And he's so afflicted that uh, Job's uh, quote-unquote comforters uh, don't really recognize him uh, until they begin to speak. And chapter 2 ends in verse 13, where they go a week, they go seven days without speaking, which would have been a custom of that culture. So basically what we see between chapters uh, 3 and uh, 37 is this back and forth dialogue and what uh, Job's friends, and there's a group of, of young guys as well as older guys, but what they're basically trying to uh, convey to Job is that the reason that you're afflicted is that there's some kind of sin in your life. And Job uh, basically is going to lose his perspective that God always blesses the righteous and afflicts the wicked. And that's not true. He is afflicted and he has been uh, a righteous man according to God's standards. And so from chapters 38 through 40, I think, are some of the most unique in all the Bible. I don't believe that there are any other parts of the Bible that describe uh, the detail of how God... Uh, maintains this world that we live in, this ball of dirt. Uh, and what's interesting is that uh, one commentator made the point that God comes not to answer the questions of Job, but he comes as the answer to Job. And so too, in our life, a lot of us come to God and we, we want answers. And what he's going to give us is actually better uh, than the answers to our questions. He gives us himself. And so in chapter 38, uh, verse 1, it says, The Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind and said, Who is this who darkens counsel by words without knowledge? Now prepare yourself like a man. I will question you, and you shall answer me. And he will just go question after question. And what's interesting is that Job doesn't have his uh, questions answered, but, you know, the Lord doesn't speak to... Uh, Job's comforters, his friends. He speaks to Job because Job is the one that in the course of these uh, several chapters, what, 35 chapters or so, um, he's the one that cries out to God. And he's the one that offers prayer to God. And so therefore, based upon that, I believe, is why, Job, why God speaks to Job. And, and that principle applies to us as well, that for those that are crying out to him, that are praying to him, God will speak to us. Now, he won't necessarily answer like we think, but what he will answer is, where were you, for example, uh, when I laid the foundations of the earth? Tell me if you have understanding. And he talks about the dimensions of the earth. He even uses Hebrew terms in the Old Testament that have to do with the, uh, kind of like similar to the weights uh, that a mechanic will put on your tires when they're balancing your car. And what God does in an amazing set of chapters is he talks about how he maintains so much order in the physical universe. And by the time he finishes um, 
oh, about, let's see, chapter 42. Um, th then Job answered the Lord and said, I know you can do everything and that no purpose of yours can be withheld from you. He says, you asked, who is this who hides counsel without knowledge? Therefore, I have uttered what I do not understand, things too wonderful for me, which I did not know. Listen, please, and let me speak. You said, I will question you and you shall answer me. And basically what Job is saying is, God, what you have for me is far exceeds what I could have um, estimated in my grief and in my pain and my loss. And that's what God has for us today. There's not going to be a verse in the Bible that guarantees any of us as a believer in Jesus Christ um, a smooth road, an easy life. But what he does have for us is himself, which is infinitely better than any alternative. So thanks for tuning in and we'll see you in the next uh, teaching.